Hello, Jeff Affronti, and today is December 15th, 2021. I'm doing a, going to do a quick 35,000 foot view of fixed index annuities versus multi-year guarantee annuities, the FIA versus MIGA or FIA and MIGA and how they compare and how they're similar at the same time. So um, let's jump into this. Basic rate review for December 15th, 2021. 20, uh, so fixed indexed annuities, um, often more competitive um, rates when they're longer term, seven to 10 years, um, anything longer than five, really, they get more competitive. MIGAs are more competitive on the shorter term. They actually exist in the two year range, whereas I don't believe there's a two year FIA out there. There are three years though, which match off. So the illustrations used during an FIA sale show the floor minimums, which is likely zero nowadays, as well as current caps or the current rates they're paying. We'll stick with the caps to make things easy right now. And they'll show a past history or a basic hypothetical of what this product would have done in the past all assumptions. Whereas the MIGA illustrations used during sale are actually, I think, a great benefit. I think during a MIGA sale, you should use an illustration because the illustration shows the exact results based on the guarantees and what happens at the end of the term and all that. It's laid out. There's no, uh, there's not going to be any discrepancy between the illustration and what the client receives. Next is crediting rates can change during the early surrender charge period with an FIA. Meaning if your cap today is 550, it could be 350 to next year on the anniversary. These can change. They're not guaranteed. I believe there is a company out there that does now guarantee the cap, but far and few uh, do that. So I'd say most do not guarantee your term outside of the bucket you're in. So um, that can change during the surrender charge period and after, of course, any of them can, but you know, we're focused during the charge period where you don't have a lot of options. Crediting rates on the MIGA will not change during the early surrender charge period. Um, whatever they're set up as at the um, contract issue, even if it's an escalating rate where the, the change is built into the contract, it's all known upfront. You'll know exactly what you get, say an escalating rate annuity or something. Next, on the FIA, usually have full death benefit, free withdrawal provisions built in. I haven't seen any a la carte ones yet where you have to pay down the cap or something to get the 10% free withdrawal or the, or the full death benefit, um, which is good. We like to see that. Um, beneficiary death benefits during the MIGAs now, um, MIGA companies have gotten a little more creative, if you want to use that term. They've come up with renewing renewing charges and you have to buy the death benefit or buy a withdrawal provision. Kind of how they um, are trying to maximize the yield in some of these products to, to help out um, in this low interest rate environment. Next, let's look at um, comparing rates. So on a current caps, point to point cap, we're not looking at these new buckets with no caps or anything. This is the traditional bucket that's been around since the invention of the FIA in America. Um, so the three year fixed index annuity cap right now is about 2%. The five year 440, the seven year is about five and the 10 year I found at 550. Now MIGA is at the same, the MIGA multi-year guarantee annuity, the guarantee rate on the three year is two, 305 up to 315 right now on the five year um, with a good company. Three, I think we can get up to 320, but it's 315 I'm showing here and 325 on the 10 year. So what does all that mean? Well. If you're in an indexed annuity here on the three year, you need to hit that cap 100% of the time to match off to a three year MIGA, right? To get that 6.12%, which a MIGA is gonna guarantee in compound interest over the three years, you need to hit that 3% cap every year for the three years. So really not, that's why I say they're less competitive on the short term. They're five year at a 4.4% cap, you'd have to hit it 80% of the time and you wind up with 18%, whereas that five year MIGA at 305 is paying only 16%. So if you hit 80% on the five year, you're gonna outperform a current five year MIGA. Seven year, 70% at 27 compared to 24 here on the MIGA. And you know, that's seven, seven percent, seventy percent of the time. And on the 10 year, six of the 10 years will get you 37% at that 5.5 cap, uh, which is equal to the 10 year at 3.25. So you can get four years of zero on that 10 year. So now if you pick up eight good years, you see you're gonna well outperform a 10 year MIGA on that indexed annuity. However, if you on the three year MIGA, if you miss one year, I mean on the three year FIA, if you miss one year, the MIGA will have performed much better. 
So let's take a look at more um, bonus products will have lower caps. If they're offering a bonus on an FIA, it's really an advance on future earnings. And you'll notice these caps will start lower and usually on renewal years will drop faster. Uh, it allows clients to change the crediting method where Amiga does it. So you, you can go if they come out with a new cap on, say, a gold bucket or some unique bucket. The NASDAQ came out with, they decided to cap it at eight. So you can change your internal crediting method with an FIA annually or biannually, depending on your, your particular crediting method. Next, um, with FIAs, higher rated carriers often are competitive. So the A and A plus companies, actually my A plus company is one of the most competitive and has the best renewal caps, like nailing the renewal caps exactly as the first year cap five years down the road. That's very strong in an FIA. So let's look at the MIGA. It's a, what's the advantage of the MIGA? Let's set it and forget it product. You know exactly what you're going to get. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to make any changes. Matter of fact, you're not allowed to make any changes in your crediting method. Um, so that's um, a peace of mind type product and you, you don't have to think about it at all or worry about what your return is going to be. Higher rated carriers are often less competitive in the MIGA space. So an A++ carrier is going to be paying maybe on the five-year 1.2%, whereas your A- minus or B plus carrier is going to be closer to the three. B++ carrier is going to be closer to the 3% range, say, on a five-year. So the higher rated carriers do not do well on the MIGAs. Um, there's no potential for rate increase during the surrender charge of the MIGA. It's again, set it, forget it. It's all guaranteed unless it's an escalating rate, which you'll know in advance. So nothing's going to change from the initial contract, um, offering. So yes, they're similar and different, but there's so much more to both of these products than just my 35,000 foot view here. So you really want to look at each one per client, uh, per situation and you can really dial in some good stuff whether it's income or just growth you're looking for on both of these products uh, you need an illustration on one of these go to our website um, fsdfinancial.com fixed annuities in life um, and you can see you can request an fia quote by clicking on the fia link here fia and drop down or request a MIGA quote here um, that's it. That's the end of my presentation. Hope you like that 35,000 foot view of how um, fixed annuities and indexed annuities can compare. Be sure to follow me on my pages here. We are on Rumble, a LinkedIn. YouTube page has been doing good. Been picking up some subscribers. Still very low. I think I only have eight right now, but I've been doing this for about a month. So if you guys want to like and subscribe, that'd be great. Have a great rest of your week. I think I have another video to do, so I'm going to end it now. Bye-bye.